This is lecture one for unit three for biology 101, and unit three covers organic chemicals. There are four main groups to the organic chemicals that we consider when we're talking about biology. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. These are called macromolecules. Macro meaning large. These uh, molecules, molecules in these four groups can be quite large, especially the nucleic acids. It can be thousands of atoms in size. And even with proteins, we talk about uh, hundreds of amino acids joined together to make up an individual protein. When we talk about large molecules, usually large molecules are made up of smaller molecules, and those large molecules are referred to as polymers. And a polymer would generally be made up of many monomers. A monomer, mono meaning single, it's a single small unit. There will be several examples where I talk about a number of small units or molecules making up the larger unit, the polymer, a larger molecule. For uh, three of these groups, the carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids, the molecules, the polymers, the macromolecules, are built up by a process called dehydration synthesis. You can look this up online, and what you'll see is you take smaller units, uh, sometimes one of the units is larger than the other one, and by pulling off the equivalent of a water molecule, hydrogen and oxygen from one and hydrogen from another, you'll cause the two molecules to come together and form a larger unit. That's where you get the synthesis. The dehydration is that you're pulling off a water molecule. This usually happens in living cells and amongst cells with the use of enzymes to make it more energy efficient. The opposite of this reaction going in the other direction is called hydrolysis. And if I mispronounce it, called hydrolysis, it helps to understand what is going on. The hydro has to do with water, lysis breaking apart. The water molecule is broken apart, and the larger molecule is broken apart into its smaller units. And um, because the water is broken apart, that's why it's called hydrolysis. So dehydration synthesis is building up, hydrolysis is tearing down. And our cells are constantly doing this as we stay alive. The first organic chemical group, the carbohydrates, uh, is made up of different types of molecules or to give different examples of carbohydrates. The simplest are what are called the monosaccharides. The mono means single, and these single molecules of sugar, saccharide has to do with sugar, would have uh, a couple of common Examples, one would be glucose, which is also called dextrose because it shifts water when it's put in solution to the right, which in Latin is dextro, or right-handed, and fructose. So those are two sugars that are monosaccharides. Dextrose is another name for glucose. Here would be an example of glucose on the left. On the right would be fructose. Notice that the names in the suffix O-S-E, O-S, that tips you off that you're looking at a sugar. Notice that they would have the same number of carbons. They actually have the same chemical formula. It's their structural formula. And these are two structural formulas. Their structural formulas are different because the double bond of oxygen is on the first carbon here in glucose. It's on the second carbon in fructose. That gives a little bit different characteristics. If you put glucose in solution, it will form a ring structure. And uh, they're giving the structural formula here, the abbreviated structure, and just the very simplified structure with each angle representing a carbon unless stated otherwise. If you were to take a chemistry class, and because this does deal with chemistry, I'll mention this, in any kind of a reaction, dehydration synthesis, hydrolysis, Eventually, we'll talk about cellular respiration and photosynthesis. You've got to keep track of your atoms. Whatever number of atoms goes in, an equal number of atoms has to come out. Some examples of disaccharides would be lactose, which is found in milk and milk products, sucrose, which is the common uh, white table sugar, and then maltose, which is found in grains, such as uh, hops and barley and, and some others. The, uh, Sucrose is made up of two 
of a uh, glucose and a fructose molecule joined together. That's why it's called a disaccharide, two simple sugars joined together. And maltose is two glucose molecules joined together. Lactose is important because a number of people are lactose intolerant. They do fine in their younger years, but uh, by the time they reach their 20s, because of their genetics, they don't produce the enzyme to break down lactose, and it causes bloating, gas, uh, sometimes diarrhea, and discomfort. Sucrose, white table sugar, you're probably familiar with that, especially if you put it on your cereals, uh, in your food and recipes. Maltose is important economically because it's used in malt liquors. Alcohol is a big business in the United States and other parts of the world also, but especially um, in some markets here in the United States. Polysaccharides, poly means many, many smaller sugar molecules put together. And I've got four examples here. Cellulose, which is found in the cell walls of plants. And we are not able to break that down. We don't have the enzymes to break it down. There's some organisms that do, some single cell organisms that are found in herbivores and carpenter ants and termites. We break that down chemically into the individual glucose molecules that make it up. Amylose is another name for starch. Starch is what most people would call it. Uh, biochemists would call it amylose. And we have amylase, an enzyme in our saliva, that breaks down starch. So anytime you eat bread or cereals, Contains starch such as corn or wheat, muffins, rolls, potatoes, potato chips. That digestion begins in the mouth. And amylose is made up of many glucose molecules, but they're arranged differently than what they are in cellulose or glycogen. Glycogen is also made up of many glucose molecules, but they're arranged differently. And glycogen is important in our muscles. It uh, goes into the buildup of our muscles. And we can break that down and reform it. Chitin is a nitrogenous polysaccharide that's found in the exoskeleton of uh, insects and uh, crustaceans, uh, fingernails, and uh, some other places. The next organic chemical group, lipids, would uh, include the fats and oils, and these are described as being hydrophobic. Hydro, again, has to do with Water, uh, Greek word phobic, phobia, which means fear, literally water fearing. Lipids don't like to mix with water. That's one of their characteristics. So if you want to try to wash a lipid or something that's lipid based, you have to use something uh, that will break it up into the smaller little globules that can then be washed down the drain more easily, not clog the drain. You can use some kind of a soap to do that. I have a structural formula of a particular uh, lipid. You'll notice that there's glycerol over here on the left, in, uh, a greenish blue, made of three carbon molecules. And connected to the glycerol portion would be three fatty acids. And sometimes uh, lipids, fatty, uh, lipids, oils are called triglycerides because of these three fatty acids. Sometimes these fatty acids are referred to as hydrocarbon chain. Hydro carbon because of hydrogen and carbon that make them up. And you'll notice these top two fatty acids are saturated with hydrogens. No double bonds between the carbons. This third fatty acid has a double bond between these two carbons that I'm circling right here. And because there's a double bond between those two carbons, carbon is not free to bond with another hydrogen. And so this fatty acid would be unsaturated. And that becomes important when we're talking about the characteristics of lipids. We tend to see saturated fatty acids as being unhealthy because of the type of cholesterols that we form from them and eventually plaque that can coat the blood vessels. Unsaturated fatty acids we tend to see as being more healthy. And the saturated fatty acids tend to be solid at room temperature. The unsaturated fatty acids tend to be liquid at room temperature. There are some exceptions, but that tends to be the rule. The length of the fatty acid chain makes a difference in whether it's a liquid or a solid at room temperature. The longer the fatty acids, the more likely they are to be a solid at room temperature. 
the shorter they are, the more likely the lipid is to be a liquid. And the explanation for that is, if there's a long fatty acid, or long fatty acids, plural, they tend to get caught on other lipid molecules, and they don't flow. They don't roll across each other so well. And that would be typical of a solid, where you have uh, the molecules are trapped and not able to move. One of the things that's important to remember is the energy difference between lipids and carbohydrates. There's much more lipid per gram in, excuse me, there's much more energy per gram in a lipid, fats and oils, than there would be in starch. This is one of the reasons why you see oils stored in some seeds and uh, in some animals, in some plants. That uh, lipid provides a lot more energy. And that's what we tend to store over a long period of time. We store lipids in the form of fat, fatty tissue in our body, and then pull from that as we need and don't take in enough energy value in our food. Some uses of where you find lipids in living things. Phospholipid, which is found in the membrane of cells. All organisms, all living organisms have a cell membrane, a plasma membrane, and the uh, phospholipid molecules make up much of the membrane. And that's the cell membrane as, all, as well as the membrane surrounding the uh, little compartments, the organelles that are found in higher forms of life, including the nucleus. Steroids, especially anabolic steroids, called anabolic because they, they're used to build up. And when uh, people have injuries, some health problems, sometimes you're given anabolic steroids. In the past, people have taken anabolic steroids to build up, to bulk up, to make them stronger. But there are uh, health problems associated with uh, long-term usage of steroids, including liver damage and, and heart damage, as well as uh, changes in moods, and it affects the uh, physical characteristics of the person. Males will tend to have larger breasts, and their genitalia will be smaller. Testosterone is a lipid, and as also estrogen. These two are fairly similar in their chemical makeup. They differ, and they have different effects. Testosterone, we think of being uh, in higher concentration in males, and estrogen, higher concentration in females. And these help to give body characteristics, physical characteristics, to uh, the individual. I've got puberty under estrogen and testosterone, and that would seem to connect, but what a lot of people don't understand is for a female to enter puberty to begin menses, uh, she would have to have a minimum amount of body fat. And if her body fat isn't high enough, she will not uh, enter puberty. This is also very important in the development of the brain. If a person is very thin, if they're starving, this is one of the issues with children who are starving, when you see pictures of them in other countries, is it will affect their brain development and it will follow them throughout life in limiting their uh, intelligence. The um, interesting thing about the, the fat and puberty, uh, some sports teams, especially the Romanians back in the 70s, would greatly limit the diet of their athletes. And uh, my understanding is the Chinese do this also because when females reach puberty, as they have more body fat on their body, it changes their center of balance. And that's quite an adjustment for a gymnast. And so to help the gymnasts do better, they put them on very strict diets where the females would not have the body fat that would change their center of balance and uh, wouldn't have to make that adjustment and would do better. Cholesterol is another type of lipid. There are good types of cholesterol, bad types of cholesterol. We tend to think the bad type of cholesterol. Some good types of cholesterol are those found in the plasma membrane. It gives stability to the plasma membrane and keep it from breaking apart. I will continue with proteins on the next video screen capture.